Denis Diderot, the principal editor of the Encyclopédie, described his project as a universal and analytical dictionary of human knowledge. And this idea or ideal of the encyclopedia as encompassing all human knowledge is not new. There are several precedents. What is innovative about Diderot's encyclopédie is his contention that the mechanical arts were a category of universal knowledge just as valuable as the liberal arts and the sciences. And in making this claim, he's very provocatively challenging long-standing um, biases against manual labor. In, in this environment in the 18th century, physical labor is conceived of as brutish or unreflective and, and unintelligent. And by contrast, the sciences and the liberal arts involve intelligence and they're, they are therefore ennobling and uplifting. And Diderot sets out to really challenge the bias against working with one's hands by showing the complexity and the creativity and skill of even the most humble mechanical arts, and in so doing, raise their status in the eyes of contemporaries by showing the role of the mind as well as the hand in the mechanical arts. And, and this, of course, calls to mind MIT's motto of mens et manus, mind and hand. In Diderot's Encyclopédie, illustration is essential to his project of elevating the mechanical arts. Um, many of the mechanical arts described in the Encyclopédie had never been described before. And Diderot realized very early on that in order to make these processes that very few people were familiar with intelligible, imagery could function perhaps even better than words. What is really uh, remarkable about the Encyclopédie, as Diderot conceived it, is the scope and the scale of plate production. He had initially envisaged 200 plates in two volumes. When it was finally completed, there were 2,900 plates in 11 volumes, and the majority of them depicted the mechanical arts. So here is um, one representative example of um, how uh, they chose to show the mechanical arts. This is um, the making of playing cards, and it shows you the typical format of these plates. So the top would have a vignette of the shop with workers applying their trades, and then the bottom would have some descriptions of the tools or implements that were particular to that trade. All of them had lengthy accompanying captions, so in this instance, um, just to give you a, a sense, this is part of the caption for the plates on playing card making. It's worth pointing out that the mere depiction in itself is ennobling. The depiction of a humble trade like the making of playing cards in the context of a book which shows the sciences and liber the liberal arts as well. So that, that in itself is ennobling. We might also speculate that it would make the readership of this book think about um, objects that they probably never gave a second thought to. So for instance, gambling and playing cards was a favorite pastime of 18th century elites. And Playing cards are probably objects that they would have had in their hands all the time, but had never really thought about where they came from. This is one of a sequence of six plates to show the complexity of the process of making playing cards. So the successive plates show um, the various um, machines and presses and every tool, including scissors, for instance. As I mentioned, some of these trades, uh, mechanical arts, had never been described before. And for those, um, Diderot sent assistants to workshops to observe the, the processes and to talk to the workers to, to understand what they were doing. Very detailed preparatory drawings were made um, for the plates to give to the engravers. Um, and Diderot, we know, sometimes had models made of machines so that he could um, work with them to understand how they worked. And the most um, famous example is a machine for the weaving of hosiery, which he apparently assembled and disassembled multiple times to understand its component parts. A few years after the uh, plates were finally published, um, a new edition of the Encyclopédie was proposed called the Quarto Edition published 1776 to 77. Quarto is a much cheaper format than the folio volumes of the Encyclopédie, and it made it accessible to many more people. But part of making it accessible and less expensive uh, re involved reducing the size of the plates, but also reducing their number. So in this new edition of the Encyclopédie, in which Diderot had no part, 
um, the plates were reduced from almost 2,900 to 546. And what's particularly interesting is that what largely disappears is the world of the artisan and the worker. So these cuts really affirm the prejudices that Diderot set out to counter in producing the Encyclopédie. And we might think again about MIT's motto, mind and hand, mens et manos. The official seal of MIT shows us a scholar and a laborer and was described as the union of knowledge and the mechanical arts. And we would do well to remember, I think, that institutions of technological learning like MIT only become possible in the 19th century after the shift that Diderot's Encyclopédie initiated. So this re-evaluation of the mechanical arts, moving them from a point at which they were seen to be lacking in honor, even lacking in intelligence, to the 19th century in which um, the mechanical arts and technology become central to the business of society.